Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please subscribe and consider liking and commenting on the video. Your comments help me to better improve the video quality and the content you guys want to see. So I really appreciate it. Uh, again, you can find me on Instagram at Everyday Machinist. So in this video today, I'm actually going to go over a very specific fixture I'm doing currently on the VF2 uh, to hold some round parts. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so right now uh, in the VF2 is a designated fourth axis machine only. We have other machines, so we don't have to worry about pulling this off. So it's kind of a luxury that we do have. Uh, it's fixed. Uh, as always, I think primarily I use the uh, ER50 collet uh, that's bolted onto the face platter of the fourth axis. The raw stock, uh, this is the fixture, but the raw stock is two and an eighth, 6061. So two and eighth OD uh, aluminum. This end was machined down on the CNC lathe as a straight shaft to fit onto a 36 millimeter. Uh, well, the collet is 36 millimeter. Uh, this ER50 collet holder I got off of Amazon. It was cheap, it was quick to get. The collet uh, itself uh, got it from Mari Tool, uh, Mari Tool USA. Um, the great products. Most of the basic stuff that I do get from them, I think 95% of the, the tool holders I do get and some tooling I get from them. It's just always phenomenal stuff. So a little plug, I'm not getting paid to do it, but they're they're great guys and you should consider going over there if you need any quick stuff. They, they have a lot of stuff in stock and their stuff is, is top notch. The other side of the fixture, we have a bull nose live center. Kind of larger one it's 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 nice it kind of helps dampen everything and on the end here I'll, I'll put a clip in on the end here it's tapered to allow the bull nose to engage it and kind of help self-center it it's pretty decent uh, but with 11 inch stick out we don't want to risk it so having this in here is is a must. Here is my pneumatic tailstock, and I will kind of bring you guys in a little closer to see it. All right. So if now if you guys real quick want to see more content or specific videos on me making some of the uh, basic or custom work holding fixtures or something like this with a pneumatic tailstock, drop a comment. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more of that or just maybe one designated video of some of the things I've made. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video on this, but I did make this. It is a pneumatic uh, Mamba cylinder, a Mamba air cylinder with a spring. I have a uh, air um, valve from McMaster car little toggle. I don't want to take it off because it's got pressure on there. Uh, but I'll put in an earlier clip of the video we shot earlier of it actually working. All right, so as you can see, it is on blocks. We had to raise it up. The fourth axis normally is six inches on center from the from the T-slot table. I had to put a inch and a half riser in there for a project that I was doing. I don't use this all the time. I used to use it quite often, not so much anymore. I wound up having to raise it up. So I'm within a, um, a, a healthy half a thou, maybe a little looser, but around that area. Some of the techniques I have to use for touching off tooling on this machine, it is an older machine. It does not have probing and I probably wouldn't put probing on this machine. Uh, this machine now, what, it's a 98, I believe it is. But I have a, a pretty simple solution to touching off my tooling. And I will grab my indicator that I use to touch off tooling for my Z. Okay, so what I have here is an SBI one inch indicator. When this plunger reaches to a certain level, and it's when I get it to that zero, and this pressure surface here, plunger is equal or level to this surface, it's one inch. 
What I wound up doing is turning down this and making it pretty parallel to the surface. This is 6.5, it's actually 6.5005, so six and a half inches and a half a thou. That's approximately what this is. And I'm, I'm kind of doing that because the total indicated runout without a collet in here, actually on the tapered surface of the ER50 body, I'm getting between two to three tenths run out, which is actually pretty, pretty dang decent. Uh, I don't think I have, I might have similar uh, to th when the collet is actually clamping onto something. In this specific circumstance, repeatability is, is always necessary, but not critical in this because this fixture is gonna stay until the job's done. We don't need this machine for anything else. Currently, we have 200 parts to run through so we're actually going to leave this fixture there until it's done. So in, in, if there's any future work to redo those parts or have another RFQ for those parts, well, we'll, you know, we'll obviously would have to do some more indicating to make sure it's where it's supposed to be. So it's kind of a little, I guess, a little, a little cheat for any kind of loose tolerances or a little bit off it. it I'm getting, it, you're getting into the weeds with it. Anybody can argue that, but again, for right now, we know it's on center. We know everything X, Y, and Z are where we need to be. Um, so here, again, so we're, we're touching off our tooling from this surface here. This, this surface, 6.5005 plus this gives us 7.5005 inches from the surface, which is exactly what the center line of this fourth axis is. So there's our Z height. Our tool height is set by this. Sometimes if I'm not running this or I'm doing something else, this is either in the way or not needed. I will then put this just on the table and touch a tool off and obviously just add 6.5005 inches to my offset of my tooling. But this does make it a lot easier because then I don't have to do any additional entering in of, of numbers to get the correct Z height value for my tooling. So it's kind of nice to we'll actually, I, I don't always leave it in here, but it can also be moved off to the side. For obvious reasons, it has to be in here for setting up tooling or having to replace tooling. It needs to be here and set off of at this height so that the uh, spindle doesn't crash into anything. We don't damage anything. So that's that. Uh, that's SPI. I think they're about 200, 300 bucks, somewhere around there, 250 maybe. Uh, fantastic tool. I, I don't, uh, for these older machines, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, if you've seen other videos too, like with, with, with my Haas here, it, a lot of things were redone on it. So it still is a very, very tight machine. Uh, after I went through all the ball screws X, Y, and Z and redid them all, and it's it's well within a half a thou under at least in a Z. I know that for sure. All right, let me show you. I want to get some stuff over here and show you guys about the fixture uh, that we have currently and how it is going to work. Okay, so this fixture has to hold a specific ID bore of round parts. <clears throat> and they're actually titanium parts. So this is kind of experimental, but I'm pretty confident it's going to hold. It's not doing a lot of rough uh, adaptive, just finishing work on this. So I'm not really too concerned about it. It's going to hold four pieces. Inside the fixture, which you're going to spin it around. Make it a little easier for everybody to see it. The fixture obviously is through hole, and then we have a cutaway, and you can see some threaded holes in here. That's where this comes in. This is the actual clamp for those parts. Relatively simple design. Again, getting into my, my whole talk and rant about time saving and efficiency and repeatability. This seemed to be the best logical reason. And, and why I say that is because it's between two centers. So it really takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. I was considering doing a plate 
with the same style, just holding it on the end would have been two individual things. So repeatability or reliability on that, uh, there's a, a greater human error uh, factor in there. So I wanted to try to eliminate it. If this is not rigid enough, which I doubt, if this is not rigid enough, we can always switch to the plate. Now the, the thickness is always gonna be the same. The, the plate that we have to make the, a, a, a plate fixture instead of a round solid bar fixture is inch and a half thick. And this final dimension here, thickness of this fixture is inch and a quarter. Uh, so this piece was done on the VF5. This was done currently in the machine as it sits. So the raw stock was put in after it was the two end machine processes on the, the Haas SL30. So these go, this slides in with enough comfort room so it's not jammed in there. This was actually put in there uh, before these scallops were, were done. And now we need it to be tight tolerant. So the bores that you see here, the four holes are actually the exact width tolerance. So it's a 1.379 bore. Uh, and the part, well, excuse me, the part is 1.379 inches OD. So we actually made these, I think, two thou bigger. So it's just enough room. We did those bores with this part in there. And then it created this bore. Then what we wound up doing, you could do it both ways, but we wound up taking down the surface that th these sit on. Therefore bringing this in closer. So it still has the same radius that is required for the part, but it brings it in closer to the center line of the part, allowing it to have a clamping uh, capability. So we put these in here. These are gonna help hold it. And what's nice is if we don't have four left, uh, two of them will hold one. Kind of like on a cylinder head where they share uh, cylinder head bolts, uh, similar to this here. So two bolts will do one and also do they share a center bolt. Okay, so we have them in here. Now this is an aerospace part. Uh, it is not done yet, but these are actually titanium. I can't show you guys the finished product, but this is about as far as we can get that to go. So very snug fit. Now with the tooling we're using, we can't actually put one next to the other because the tooling will hit the opposite. So what we're gonna do is take one and put it from the bottom side going up. So it'll run an op here, plenty of reach without interfering, and then do the same thing. Uh, we could have opened them up a little bit bigger. Um, we could have opened them up a little bit bigger, but, and some of these with, with real quick, with tool wear on titanium, these range within, we're within tolerance. They can range between uh, plus or minus three thou. So you'll have a couple that are a little bit tighter due to a little bit of tool wear. Uh, so don't take that one as a, so these are actually pretty accurate. So then all we do is just apply a little bit of pressure and it ain't gonna go anywhere. Once those are set, we torque, we torque these down. I'm just gonna get them all to kind of an even thing. I'm not gonna torque them right now. They gotta come back out. I'm gonna do a couple more checks and then we could start running them. And the reason they're open in the backside is we have to finish milling down inside. We need to remove some of the internal weight to this titanium part. And all of this was done on the CNC lathe to save time. So the finished bore on the inside on the lathe was done, but it can only go so far because it kind of has a very... Um, non-cylindrical non shape going down, so nothing a lathe could turn, uh, going down to the rest of the part. So we do the most we can and rough it off 
and then part it off so you can see the remaining stock on that little tiny nub on these parts part it off and then they would come over here for some more operation we're only left about 40 thou on the remainder of the part uh, so there's really not that much work but there's a couple features that have to happen on the top of this part in order for them to be finished and they require a fourth axis um, uh, machine center here it's a really neat idea to hold them hopefully it works but this is what i have to do on a weekly basis sometimes a daily basis uh, things that i have to do to complete some of these jobs and this is a little bit bigger of an order than we are used to not our biggest order but uh, something we're, we're kind of not used to and the easiest thing for me to do is just to make a simple fixture instead of one at a time and I think originally I did I did a first article so I did three of these and I didn't have this style of fixture so it was kind of like a three-step process going from these different machines so I want to keep everything onto one machine because originally I could not get to the bottom here when it was in this machine. So I think originally when I did it, they were inside of the ER50 collet. And it was very difficult to, to kind of keep track of the machining process. So there was a lot of preliminary and post measurements just to make sure that it's where it needs to be. Uh, anyway. So now I'm able to get the end mill down and do all the milling I can from the inside and the outside in one uh, setup. So it makes things a lot easier. But like I said, we'll do some torque these down. I notice you kind of go, got to go back and forth, but it's not too bad. Makes life a whole lot easier having a setup like we have here. Thanks everybody for watching the video. Hope that helped. Hope you guys learned something. Again, please subscribe, share the video, like, comment, all that stuff. Comments definitely help me grow the channel, help me really see what you guys want to look at. Again, if you want to see a little more specific stuff, please just drop a comment down below. I will respond to every comment. That's reasonable. And from there, we'll hopefully do more videos. Help me grow the channel and we'll get more content going up there with specific fixturing. I like doing this stuff. I hope you guys too. I think watching some of the analytics about the videos, you guys prefer this stuff more. So I want to keep it going and filming some stuff that I'm allowed to film. Uh, thanks again. Again, Instagram, Everyday Machinist. Give me, a, give me a follow over there. Thanks, guys. Have a great one.